there's a different case in the mirror. Uh, so I'm always going to hear it doing the tune for a second as well, but it's like having a pillow wrapped around your head, it's very muffling. So having that little kick, you know, and, uh, and waking up again, it sort of resets, resets things. Mm -hmm. so, so. Yeah, the, they tip the chairs back for us, when, especially for mine as well, when the fun facial bits being put on, and I get those as well, which is nice. I think the girls like it who make us up as well, because then we're not talking and moving, yeah. so we're nice and still, so we can get the makeup on properly. Get the brushes in much <laughs> yeah, more easily. Yeah. 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 And once you're made up, you're, you usually, Dan, you, you're in a suit of armour, mm. and you're usually in these mm. dresses, so for, uh, you, Am I right that you were in a corset and a pair of leather trousers at one point as well? Yes, yes, yes. for a deep breath, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> how awkward and how difficult it is once you're, you're fully made up, fully in costume, to do normal day-to-day -day things? Really uh, <laughs> difficult. <laughs> yeah. really going, just simply going to the bathroom becomes a major, major job. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, I was very pleased when they had the butler costume as opposed to the, the blue battle suit, because I didn't have to wear rubber trousers <laughs> for the next 10 minutes to be hoisted into, yeah. with a lot of talcum powder and, uh, and shiny girls dance tights for me as well, to make, try and slip on a bit more easily, but uh, yeah, it's quite involved, but yeah, once you see those, you're like, oh, perhaps I should go for a bit of a safety. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Does it not get incredibly hot? It depends, yeah, it's warm, but it depends yes. on when we're filming. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's, 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 it's sort of insulating. Um, and when you're in a warehouse or an aircraft hangar in sort of like in sort of January, yeah. that's fine. But then of course, if we're, <laughs> perversely, if we're filming the cruise episode in July, yeah. in a hot studio with lots of fake snow, where we're trying not to die of heat stroke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So over the, over the series, uh, series, 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 uh, I believe series five was your first, it was, was yes. and you were the favourite tenant yeah, series, four. series four. Yes. How have you, with your characters, you obviously developed the characters initially with the initial doctor that you meet, so you David Tennant and, and Matt Smith. You did the change from Matt Smith into Peter Capaldi. You were actually there for the change. Yeah. How was that? How, I mean, you're taking the lead of a show and you're completely changing them. You, you, presumably you would follow their lead. Uh, how was the dynamic change completely when it went from what, well, for yourself, David, to Matt and to Peter, and for yourself, Matt and then to Peter? I think it's, it's one of those, it's such an iconic moment in Doctor Who, so to be there actually at that moment was uh, was really incredible, and sort of just standing back and watching Peter, and having to go, right, okay, it's not Matt, it's still the Doctor, but it's not Matt that I'm so used to, and so you're just, to a certain extent, just standing back and watching. And going right, okay, who is who is the doctor this time? And yeah, and as you said, you take the lead from there. But yeah, I love that because it's such a those moments. Yeah, and I think um, when I started, I didn't actually have that have, have that many scenes with David, but uh, certainly the read through. Um, by the time I saw John when, when Matt was on board, he'd been doing the doctor for about so like a, a scene and a half, I think, so he knew what he was doing. But it was nice because when we were there on the first Peter's first day, he was very open, so I like going, okay, bear with me, it's my first day. I do know these lines, <laughs> but uh, I'm a little bit nervous because I'm new to Doctor Who, so bear with me. We all go, yeah, it's fine, it's fine, yeah, whatever yeah. we can do to help. Do it, it's it. fine, yeah. Whatever and you but, do is going to be brilliant, don't worry. Yeah, it's because he's such an experienced and very open sort of actor, but everyone was like, yeah, that, that's great, we all know what we are. But it was sitting, watching um, Stephen and Brian, sort of like uh, the, the, the executive producers and writers behind the monitors, I just remember sort of like seeing them after the first couple of takes, and Stephen was like, <laughs> it's like that's 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 what uh, we got it right, thank God. Because <laughs> I do I don't know if, if you read the store or heard the store, but I heard that Stephen had planned on stepping down when Matt left. I don't know if you heard that at all? No. Not that kind of No, okay, I just mean that. Um, cool. So you've played multiple characters of your 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 race. Um, how did you find the separation? I mean, it's not so difficult with the clone army, but the clone race. With, yes, with the clone race, but with the, with the Silurian, you play multiple characters of the same race. How did you find the change of the character for that? Um, <laughs> I suppose I just sort of found anything I could to make. I mean, Vasto is so differently written. Because um, I kind of thought, well, that's it. I've done my Doctor Who when I did Alea and Restack, and it's brilliant. I've been a baddie and killed twice. Um, so when they phoned 
to say, oh yeah, we'd like me back, eh? And I was like, oh no, no, you've killed me. <laughs> <laughs> but then of course they went, yeah, but you know, it means the nothing female Siberians look like you, so, um, so that was fantastic. And Bastra, there was so much more I'd written to him. Yeah. Playing a good, yeah. playing someone who was bad, that then turned good, gave me a lot more to play with as well, so that, yeah, the cheekiness can come out of somewhere that's a bit more disdainful, I suppose, but, um, I don't know. I suppose I didn't have her moving as reptilian, I mean, such a reptilian woman. Yeah. So she was a bit more, she'd live with humans for a lot longer and become a little bit more ape-like, I suppose, in her attitude. More touchy-feely reptile. Yeah, more touchy-feely reptile, yeah. Not as cold-blooded, yeah. And, and Dan, you, uh, you finally got out of your potato head for the Christmas special. Yeah, so a little bit of a treat after seven years in a rubber suit. Yeah. Yeah, I still had Robert Eads, but still was. How was it working with Frost? Oh, oh fantastic. It was, it was a revelation, just so I, I could hear everything. I could say, this was responding to this normally. Because the thing is, with a mask as well, wearing a mask, it's, you've got to learn almost how to do it. It doesn't mean really like how you're doing it, especially with the stress, it's not to a certain point if you tilt your head. But with actually just my normal voice, I could just hear people respond to me normally, and Nick Frost is great fun. And it's like, oh, I really enjoyed watching you on screen, and now, oh, and now you're like you are in the on screen. Yeah, it's really fun. Brilliant. So, unfortunately we didn't get to see you in the 50th anniversary, but we saw you sandwiched either side of it. But, but uh, Lee, we didn't so much. But Dan, you did manage to make up some cinema promos for... <laughs> yes, Strax was invited to uh, give, his, uh, give his thoughts about cinema etiquette. Yes. <laughs> about how popcorn can feel pain. <laughs> That was just delightful. It was just, uh, yeah. It was was awesome. that officially sanctioned, or was that? Yes, I mean, he, I guess he wrote it. it. So he wrote it. Was, it. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, it came from the top. Wow. Yeah. So when when the dynamic of you you guys and and Shelley coming on board as well, yeah. uh, was it? Did, did you have any idea that that three way comedic uh, comedy relief um, triplet, if you want to call it that? Uh, do you have any idea that that was going to develop over the, over the series to follow? We had no <coughs> idea where it was going to go at all. <laughs> it just um, people loved the characters, so we just get getting brought back. Because yeah, because every man goes to war. It's just like we were suddenly catapulted in in the middle of our story, as it were, and sort of yeah, so making it up as we went along. Yeah. Quite a bit, but um, it was lovely to come back to to have that sort of reaction to what we'd done. And did you have any flexibility for a bit of improvisation with it as well? Because obviously you, you get the script and you know what you've got to say, but it, you know that you're also slightly in the comedy room as well. So do you get to put your own spin on everything, or do you get to put your own anything into it? Or? Well, you, yeah, I mean, in general, you do whatever you can to make, make this stuff work. So, I mean, you would always be chatting over what scenes beforehand, you know, how we were going to do it. We kind of all bounced off each other yeah. quite naturally anyway. So that was quite really nice to, yeah. Yeah, I mean, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. And I know by the way, with, with the scripts that you get, sort of like, uh, if anything, there's more lines on the script than you actually see on the screen. So it tends to be the case that the first thing <coughs> is that the plot's got to work. So if there are, even if there are some like great jokes or whatever that come from the moment, <laughs> they're, they're not necessarily going to make the edit because they've got a 45 minute slot, but you have to tell the story in. So, but yeah, occasionally some things, little things. Right, well, I'm going to throw the questions out to the audience. So, if anybody has any questions, please throw your hands up just now. And uh, there's one straight up over there, gentlemen on the beard. Some of your lines are very funny. You want difficulty to deliver it. Well, mine are his. <laughs> I think he's funnier. <laughs> Um, no, you just you, you just try your best and hope that yeah that it it comes out. But I think I mean I love working with Dan. We, we spark off each other really well, and he's a very very funny man, so it's easy. The thing is keeping a straight face. <laughs> Luckily, the rubber helps. Yeah. So it's really <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bit stiffer than normal. So. Yeah. The, the one I had problem with at one point was the lemon sherbet <coughs> line in the Crimson Horror because I got a bit. <laughs> but yeah. That's Right. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's good. It's, it's also the weird thing as well, is that sort of, uh, and things like read throughs. I remember when we did the first read through for um, at the Christmas special, or whatever. So oh, I have this like, um, uh, sir, I oppose your current apathy, or whatever. And I remember like, not being able to look at that, so like, um, 
you know, just because just we were laughing a lot. But by the time you've rehearsed it and you know the lines and that sort of thing, and you're very aware that you've got a limited amount of time to get the scene in there. People usually have hold it together. But mm. sort of like, I think it's also just because we can't hear very well inside our thing. So that does tend to sort of thing that I've got to do all of my homework beforehand and know that that's, that, 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 that's going to work. So yeah, there's, 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 there's fun, but also you know, you've got a job to do. Yeah. So, so yeah, so it's a big mixture. Where did the Christmas carols come from? <laughs> <laughs> All them, so all them. We were sitting, I mean, it came up, it was one morning, wasn't it? We were getting lots things of delays, done. Yeah. Lots of delays, and we were in the seat, and I don't know where it started from, but it just, yeah, yeah. strikes things Christmas came up. And, <laughs> and I just started making it up. Yeah, I, I made it up, and then sort of like uh, Matt overheard me and thought, oh, that's really good. Said to our director, oh, it's just like that. And then, bear in mind, this was quite a fraught morning, it's schedule wise. So, the, the, the first AD whose job it is to like, expedite things and make things go on. It's like, uh, the rest of the night, look, just, just don't tell him. And we'll, we'll, we'll try and film it so it's like after this thing scene. So, then we did our scene, it's like, okay, in front of the console. And then, the, hang on, this isn't on the schedule. So, that's a time and place, it's starting to get a bit edgy, edgy, but then it sort of like came out with my first Christmas carol. And then everyone laughed, and it was like, oh, thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> and they filmed it, and it went up to the producers, and they thought it was funny as well, thankfully. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so that was a, that was a nice one. That's the, the, the only bits of actual abstracts I've actually written myself. Written myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you. <laughs> oh, I've had a few good ones. Um, oh, people are eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, my ultimate favourite is Good evening. I'm a lizard woman from the dawn of time, and this is my wife. <laughs> <laughs> but you, do you have a favourite? I, I think I first realised that the character might, <laughs> might have legs. Well, I had lines like, I can produce magnificent quantities of lactic fluid. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, what was your first reaction when you read about the pattern of the guy, like, what was in the room, like, what When we first got the script, yeah. is it where I yeah. had? Well, I just thought it was amazing, you know, that it was going to be going to be in a lot in Doctor Who again as someone else and as I said before you know being a goodie as well and then getting teamed up and it was really lovely when we got more scripts and we got more to do start to plot in you know ideas and how we met and oh, well, we, we did end up filming that yeah. little bit of after we might also work saving you yes wasn't it yeah because we filmed it all out of sequence as well so first of all we went up for the crimson I, I thought we were only going up for three weeks to do the crimson horror and I went through the door, and I was like, and Stephen and Marshall said, like, yeah, you, you would have noticed you're alive. Yeah, I didn't notice that. <laughs> Don't worry, just go with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll try to And then we did the Christmas, we, we did the Christmas special yeah. sort of halfway through the Crimson Horror. Yeah. And then, so it was, it was a bit sort of like confused. Yeah, you know, sort of like, yeah. yeah it was, it was like, interesting. Can you, down, can you go down to Cardiff for a couple of weeks? We want to go to film. And I think we were there for about two months. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did we yeah. ask go? The whole thing of running out of clothes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was... Uh, yeah, but it was, it was great because it was just, you know, because we, 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 we hit it off, you know, doing a good man goes to the water. It was really nice to be invited back and actually so I go, oh, that's, that's fine. So you should turn up and do a good job and have fun with people. And then, you know, people notice it's great. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to ask, how was it working with uh, Richard E. Mann? Ha <laughs> ha he I've worked with him now about two times. He's fabulous. He's so funny. He's a lot, a lot of fun. I mean, it's like he's a big kid. So was, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I helped him on his pronunciation of Valyard because uh, nobody else in Saturday knew how to pronounce the Valyard, so I was very pleased about that. I suppose it's spelled Valyard, isn't it? Exactly, yes, he was saying Valyard, and I respectfully <laughs> suggested for the director of those. Right, any more questions? Yes, sir. Where do you get distracted? <laughs> it's, it's suppose it's like my voice, but a little bit more baritone. It is interesting because the first episode that I did um, with David Tennant, the Sontarix, um, yeah, the Sontar and the Stratagem, the, yeah, the Poison Sky, I think the director of that Douglas, he was very keen that they should just sound business like, but so like not too alien. So it was like, it was just, you know, just, 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 just speak quickly, but 
with Strax, I was able to do a bit more like how my original instincts had been. So, so he does talk like a villain, you know, so he relishes his speech, you know, sort of like a, <laughs> because lots of half of voices are threats. So it's sort of, uh, and, and I think there is, that, there is that kind of really, he will melt him with acid. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's got that sort of gravelly kind of baritone thing. And also the sometimes because they're very militaristic, they're used to sort of barking out orders, so it has got that kind of, uh, that gruffness to it as well. So I think it's, it's lots of things going on. And just absorbing Doctor Who and other kids, so there's yeah, <laughs> a way that villains speak. <laughs> Um, the episode. How do you think the characters will react to the fact that the Doctor's now a woman? Well, I think Alistair will be very interested. <laughs> <laughs> might be a wee bit of jealousy going on. <laughs> Jenny might not be very happy with it. Um, no, I think it'd be amazing if you got the Phantom Masters. I mean, the whole dynamic would be fabulous, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. There'd be a bit of cattiness going on. Next Phantom would be confused, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, well, actually, no. the original shooting um, script on the, um, not on Peter's first episode, on, uh, the, 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 when he pulls out the TARDIS, uh -huh. the original sort of like line going to the title series, which was like, here we go again, and the Strax goes, why is he turned into a woman? <laughs> <laughs> and then that was chopped out for the final edit, because probably, let's, let's not add on another gag, just, let's start on a new tenure. Like, That's right. Yeah, 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 so I think there's only, uh, is it a woman one this time? Yeah, it's like I'm just treating the contempt of all the, you know, yeah. alien deals. <laughs> uh, sorry, hang on for a minute, sir. If you've been in Doctor Who, can you still watch it? Or is it? Can you see beyond what's on the screen and think, oh, that's that's just work, that's that's set number three or whatever? Can you actually still suspend belief and enjoy it? Oh, yeah. Pretty yeah. much, mainly, yeah. yeah. There's Every now and again there'll be something, you go, oh, yeah, I like that. They reused that. Yeah. <laughs> there was, they reused um, uh, some of the Silurian dressing from the underground tunnels from the very first two episodes that I did in a late in episode. I was like, it's mine! It's my stuff! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so now and again there'll be something that jokes you out, but no, I think, yeah, in general. Oh, yeah. Still in it. It's funny, because it was my favourite programme when I was a kid. When I was little, I lived in Cardiff. So it was kind of like, it's the weird thing when it came back going, right, that isn't London. That's behind the vegetable market. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, by, by Debenham. So it was, like, it was like going, ah, hang on, I know where that is. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so it always has that sort of thing. Or when the TARDIS materialised in, where I sort of like, um, I'm from in uh, Monmouth, which is basically the 19th century, as far as, as, far as Doctor Who goes. So it's like weird things like that, that's the chemist. So yeah. it has got that sort of element to it. But um, so that actually, when we were doing um, the Christmas special one year, I stayed in my childhood bedroom with my dad drove me to set. <laughs> 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 which is quite strange. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, dad, I've got my sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's, which is quite, quite a strange one. But yeah, but otherwise, yeah, I can still watch it and, and we're really enjoying it and stuff. But I think you can appreciate it on different levels, can't you? So. Yeah. <laughs> Um, is the mask heavy, or is it just like, because I know, like, what is it made out of? What's like the base? Because it's quite large. It's silicon foam, so it's kind of, um, which is sort of like foam rubber, but it's like a slightly different, so it has a slightly sort of harder quality to it. Um, <coughs> but it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's not that heavy, but it's basically like having your head wrapped in a pillow. That's the kind of thing which I can liken it to, and it's quite stiff. So it takes about three people to sort of like, pull it out, and they go over the head, and then my face is poking out of it, and they stick a mask, a thinner mask, of a slightly different material on top of that, and then blend it in. Most of the actual work is blending it in and painting it up, so you can't see the joints and stuff. But it's, yeah, so it's, it's not too heavy, but it's just, it's just, you know, it's, it's just something that's you basically doing that all the time. <laughs> and then you head with, do you have a head with, do you have a... Uh, mine's sort of three bits. Um, I've got a rubber neck that they pull over. And it's not too heavy. The back bit, with my spiky spines, that's um, is it's empty in there a bit. So it's like hard plastic, but still you can still bend it a bit. And then the front face it was on is very light silicon, and so that moves, <coughs> moves quite a bit. So it's not really that heavy. The worst actually, I love my neck, but when I'm <clears throat> I'm in the Victorian high necked costume, I can't actually move it very much. 
so I get a wee bit jammed in. But no, it's quite light, and sometimes, yeah, I forget I've got it on, and I jam my head in doorways without bending. <laughs> 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 that gives me a shock. Yeah. Knocking through doorways. Oh yeah, you yeah. can't fit through doorways. You've got to go sideways. Yes. Yeah. And we're both a little bit harder of hearing than we yeah. are normally, so we usually sit in the corner. Yeah. Going, Sorry, what was the joke? <laughs> <laughs> it's not the elderly. <laughs> Always leaning in. What? Oh, yeah, I think you were hey. saying there that it was. <laughs> Number 23. <laughs> Just. Um, what was it like when you first like, auditioned for the characters and then you get in the role? Well, yeah, gosh. I was so excited because it was Doctor Who, first of all. So I was at Faith and they'd sent me uh, two different scenes to prepare. One is Restack and one is Alea, so that I could get a difference. Um, I remember being really nervous going in, and when I came out, I just sort of thought, oh, I don't think I did it right. I think, oh, oh, my preparation, sometimes you prepare a lot and then everything goes out the window because it's just what happens in the room. Um, and I came out there thinking, oh, I didn't get that, fuck that, you know, damn it. Um, but then the next day, the phone went, yeah, we love her, we want me, and that, that was that. That's it done. Phone my brother up. Guess what, man? Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, likewise. I sort of like I, I got the audition. I gave it to my agent uh, a bit of a prod about a month before, just because there, there was yeah there was an audition I couldn't go to because of some commitment or something. So I was like, oh yeah, if I get out, yeah, it's my birthday next month. Can I be in Doctor Who? Which one I want to do? And then it happened to be when they were casting the Sontarans and having them back, and they were all quite small. So that was kind of like a it's a height thing <laughs> as much as anything else. But then. So once I had, had, I had the audition, then I giggled like an idiot for about an hour. <laughs> and then I thought, right, I'm going to really prepare this quite a lot. And so they sent me, they sent me the whole script. It was a much earlier draft of it. So it was interesting how different it was from the eventual one on the screen. And then, yeah, I went in there and then I did one read, which was quite strange to show I'm a proper actor. I could do proper acting. And then, <laughs> and then, and then the sort of like producer sort of said, okay, that's great. Um, because you make it a bit more um, alien. It's like, right, well, okay, how far can I go with this? Like, how is this? <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, good, yeah. <laughs> you can do both, that's good. And then, yeah, and then when I got it, it was about a week later, then I laughed like a maniac for about an hour. Jumped <laughs> around the room, yeah, and, yeah, so, yeah, phone up there. Lots of yeah. ear punching. <laughs> yes, lots of ear punching. Once you've done a couple of episodes and, and you've developed your characters, you know, you know how to play your characters. Do you ever get a script in from a, a different writer who hasn't <coughs> written for your characters before? Like, my character would do that. I don't think I have. Not a Doctor Who, anyway. No. Yeah. 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 I think everything is always, yeah, everything is always spot on for me, anyway, that I felt. Yeah, I never had that. Yeah, but once or twice, and it's more sort of like stuff with the, because um, I used to be sort of like Stratus Field Report, a little sort of like YouTube bits. Well, once or twice, it was basically turns of phrase. I thought, it might be a little bit nicer in Stratus than this. But yeah, but by and large, you know, it's all written by either or like as well as like, written by Steve or Mark Davis, so it's like they, they know what they're doing. <laughs> so it's kind of um yeah. yeah. You know so. <laughs> <laughs> Any more? Okay. I absolutely loved Strike's design when you first met Peter the Cat Pony when you changed her over like, and all that. But who's your favourite doctor to work with? Oh, that's a very political question. <laughs> it is. I know it'll be all of them, but... Yeah. Oh. I mean, you know, something we worked on, I think I worked on screen most with Matt, and it was great fun, so like, just when we were doing the Christmas special stuff, it was sort of like, you know, almost like Blackadder and Bulldog. It's like going around all those bits, which is lovely, that kind of rapport that struck some of the and that Doctor was, was was great fun. But, you know, I've had a chance to do all the big finish, all the big finish work with all of the old Doctors as well, and there was something about putting the headphones on and then so like hearing Peter Davison or Tom Baker's voice going up there, going, I'm going to have something to do with Tom Baker. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's quite exciting, so, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah oh gosh, I mean, I suppose I've, I've worked with Matt most, and he can't say, so kind of is my daughter and my favorite, really. Um, I mean, I've worked with David Tennant on something else. I actually worked with Jodie Whittaker on something else years ago. But I would have to be like for me, definitely. <laughs> Yet to work with Tom Baker, so that might change. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you mentioned Jodie. Obviously, you've worked with her before. Uh, Dan, have you worked with Jodie before? No, How do you feel about <coughs> Jodie stepping into the Towers and taking over? Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like. Yeah, I'm hoping the stories will just be as good as ever. Just happens to be a, a woman that's playing the part. 
Yeah, I think it's exciting. It's all changed. It's like, you remember that sort of like change in between when Russell was running and then Stephen came and it was just a whole sort of like new, new, new feel to it. I think again, it's just like, oh, okay, right. So that's sort of big, big shit. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's very exciting. And there's lots of people so like who, you know, who I know who so like haven't really watched up to like, oh right, I'll give that. So it's nice that it just makes it sort of like a current and, and fresh again. It's, and it's yeah. changing the audience as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 So and it's also the weird thing as well, you know, so meeting meeting people here today. And I remember my first episode of Doctor was you know, over ten years ago now. And I think you know, right, okay, so some of the fans <laughs> weren't born. Yeah. <laughs> which is quite strange. Yeah, exactly. yeah. But, yeah, you forget now it's been on you know, it's been came back in two thousand and five, which is a fair old while ago now, yeah. yeah. Cool. Any more questions? Just stand on Would you say that Doctor Who has really changed your life significantly? And if so, how? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the simplest way, yes. Um, yeah, it's just, it's opened up a whole world. I mean, being able to come to things like this as well and speak to everyone and find out what it is that they love about the series as well and how it's touched them. I mean, I grew up watching it. I was a fan from, you know, I was tiny and it's done nothing but good for me. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, likewise, I was a huge fan when I was a kid and I was like, I only left drama school about 18 months before I actually sort of got cast. It was my first television job. And so it felt like a bit of a validation. So, thank God I have made the right decision. <laughs> so I, was, I was a bit older when I so I actually became a, an actor professionally. So I was like, oh good, at least, at least something else. So, so it felt like I was like, yeah, the, the gods were smiling in that, kind of, in that kind of way. So yeah, yeah, it's very, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. And it's just that whole thing of just re sort of, yeah, it's like a touchstone. Of, yeah. Uh, what, what you get into in the first place when you're sort of like acting out stuff that you really love to the telly in the playground, yeah. and then I thank you. Yeah. We get the chance to do that in that <laughs> as well, which is fantastic. <laughs> we're really incredibly lucky to do so. Yeah, it's great. Uh, there's a little man over the corner. Oh, hello. Um, hello. What was your favourite scene um, that you ever um, did? What's your favourite scene? Oh, I think I can think of one. Um, one of my favourite scenes was just because I got the chance to do stunts. <laughs> I had a pub brawl with a Scotsman. <laughs> and there was an entire sugar glass window that I bashed through. And so I, got, I met the man who was actually playing the Scotsman who I was meant to be fighting with, and he was enormous. And then I met his stunt double, <laughs> who was even bigger than him. And so we had this amazing piece of stepped it through a couple of times and basically all I had to do was basically cling on to this enormous black horse and threw himself through this glass window. It was just it was just amazing and it's also, it's like a stunt like you see like you see in the films and things like that. And um, and because Strax's costume is so happy that I could just throw the throw myself around and not feel anything. So it was, uh, and then it looked really cool on screen. So yeah, that's, that's, what, yeah, that's, that's really fun. I've got so many wow. I have tons of them. <laughs> Pretty much every scene I've been in, probably. Um, I mean, I loved, I loved it in um, Peter's one when we got to fight all the robots. I loved yeah, doing that. Because I just had two um, stunt guys in front of me just going, no, just kick us and chop at us. And just, like, we'll just fall over. I really like that. Yeah, again. <laughs> Yeah, that was a lot of fun. No, it's, it's great. I remember when I was at drama school, because out, out, of, out of my class, I wasn't going to be the obvious action hero. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I was very It's like, that's my friends, if they were lucky enough to be on television, you know, their first job was something, something good, it's sort of like casualty, where they get to say, it hurts here. Or something like that. <laughs> you know, which is, you know, a good job, not to cry at all. But it's like, my, my first job was like, I'm in a warehouse with a ray gun, shooting unit troops, laughing. But... <laughs> 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 There's a little voice in the back of my head going, I'm going to pay to do this as well. <laughs> 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 Brilliant. Any more questions? Everybody. Oh my god, It's fabulous. It's absolutely it's fabulous. The other so lady nice. who, yeah, I've met a couple of times now and she loves to dress up for me. I think, I mean, at first, not many people were doing it because it takes an awful lot of work to come as me. But um, I love it, and I end up running up to them and hugging them, getting selfies. <laughs> Some of them don't know who I am. You find out that I'm in the costume as well. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so remember when we first did a convention together, and we were just walking around, so I quite. I was like, who's a tall Scottish woman and a little man? Why do I look like a baby? Yeah, likewise, with Strax, it's, it's a tricky one because there's so much matter. Well, unless you've got access to sort of like, you know, a great big sort of, sort of making it out of the actual material is quite tricky, but you know, I really appreciate the effort that people have 
made, a, made a song, the entire song to you know, a giant Rolo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Rolo, yeah. Well, potato some people will refer to as um, what hallway ran? Did you tell them about it? I just wonder, it has like, like, amazing and there's so much fun. Do you ever wish that they kind of broke out with like a little mini spin off so that you can kind of develop them more? And... Yeah, three competitions going around, but nothing sort of happened. But I mean, definitely <laughs> both of us, you know, yeah. We, we wish for like a, a to do. Yeah, have our 15 hour day in prosthetics and like, <laughs> sit, sit back in the lobby of the hotel eating a bowl of soup. You know, yeah. and, you know, picking, picking the rubber out rise. We have our own suit. <laughs> <laughs> really cool. And then, oh, my God, I didn't. Yeah. And you see, those of you as well. We have a machine that just uh, transforms how your face looks, so we don't have to spend so long on it. Yeah. 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 Those gifts are all kind of circus. You know? Yeah. 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 Those are what. Yeah. 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 On the other cover, it's some yeah. freakish woman. Yes. Yeah. Big finish. I hope you're listening. Yeah. Uh, and there you are. I saw some. Maybe just. And the. Characters are kind of like comical mostly. Uh, and how does it like differ from doing like the serious scenes, like for example, like when Clara um, got really angry at you and when um, Alex Kingston slapped you and stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I suppose it's um, you kind of take the take the comic moments, which are great, could, um, to sort of. Uh, alleviate some of the seriousness actually so it's nice it's always nice to play not something that's all, all on one level as it were that you, you can have peaks and troughs so i love i really love the fact that um in uh, the name of the doctor we see when jenny gets killed and we had that moment and that was really tense really serious moment but then, you know, then we can go back to laughing and joking around that's jenny's back and it's all all right so it's, yeah i think i think it's great for everyone you see a, you see a three-dimensional aspect yeah. For the characters. I like those, even when you're playing comedy, it's like Strax doesn't find himself remotely funny. Yeah. <laughs> he takes himself very seriously. Yeah. And that's where quite a lot of comedy is. So he actually, you know, no, I'm actually being polite. I'm being a well brought up Santar and Office and you will dress in human filth. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole thing of, I hope one day to meet you on the field of battle where I shall crush the light from your worthless human form. That's actually really quite a nice thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the point. Yeah. There is, I suppose there's a twist. <coughs> so you, he's taking, he does take himself seriously as well, so it's kind of, so that there's not as much of a difference in between playing the sort of comic bits and the sort of more dramatically serious bits as, as you might think. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, wait a minute, that's another hand up for you, Ryan. How long does it take to put your makeup on? How long? Oh, three and a half hours, pretty yeah. much. It's a little bit less for me because my, yeah, exactly. I've only got, I've only got two pieces. Right, okay. yes. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's quite quite a while. And in film, sometimes I have hands that have to be put on. They they take another hour just to put my hands on. <laughs> so they're quite fiddly, and there's a lot of painting to be done on them. So yeah, it takes quite a while. But yeah, the more we can sleep through it, the better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then taking it off as well it depends. If we've got to be there for the start of the day, like you know, at eight, by seven o'clock at night or whatever, it does come off quite easily. But if we say something lunchtime. But the glue's still quite strong there. It can take up to an hour just to get it off your face properly. And part of that process is not just to take it off your face, but also to make sure that your face can withstand having it put on at five o'clock in the morning the following day. So it's kind of, yeah, the prosthetics guys are really good, not only at making the masks look good on the screen, but also looking after the actors within them. So it's kind of, a, it's like having a, it's nice, it's like having a big on set for us to make sure that you're. It's like your own personal nanny, yes. sort of thing. Yeah. Are you right? Are you going to fall over? Are you Are you all right? Yes. Here's a bottle of water. Here's some tea with a straw in it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, you don't do it. No, no, For me, Tom Baker. Tom Baker died, yeah. I loved him. I, I vaguely remember, I'm sure. Um, the change after uh, Planet of the Spiders from John Kerr to be to Tom Baker, and that's how old I actually am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And a bit. <laughs> well, likewise, I, I remember the very, very end of Tom Baker, so I think the Keeper of, keeper of Trakan is about the first, the first full story I remember. I can remember it's snatches from one. But then, so, so again, one of the big formative things when I was watching sort of like uh, you know Tom Baker turning to Peter Davison, and it's like and that was I think, uh, and then they had this repeat season 
called the Five Faces of Doctor Who, which I must have seen when I was about four or five or something. And there was something that completely captured my imagination about this character who could be different people at different times. And then I was, I was hooked from then on. So Peace Davis was like my first proper Doctor Who. It was, it was actually real, it was a documentary, and that was real. And then, but yeah, so I loved all the 80s Doctors, but by the time Sylvester came on, I was a bit more of a cunt, you know. So when they made so when they, when it's like you know some continuity reference like ah oh, yes I can see what you're doing there a <laughs> <laughs> discerning ten year old yeah some of the eighteen doctors. Um, what what do you do in between doctors? What in during the day or in general throughout a year or something? Um, oh what drink lots of tea. <laughs> I tend that's what I tend to do. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we sit and I mean, we can't really chat that much because most people, when they've got a bit of downtime, when they're doing a reset, um, but, uh, everyone sits around and has a laugh, but to them, you know, we can't hear very well, so we sort of start looking at each other with the faces. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a nap as well, I'm very good at napping, it's, especially when you've got up at five o'clock in the morning, it's very important. And then once yeah. I remember, in stretches of like full collar, like that, I dozed off in the chair. At the corner of the set, and I woke up. Someone would have put a boiled sweet <laughs> for, me to, for me to have because I'd been passing a box of sweeties around the set. And I woke up, oh, that's where I thought it was. I can see the point of the neck ring now. He's <laughs> got a cup holder. <laughs> have you ever been on set with something that actually come up? Yeah, actually, when we were doing Good Man Goes to War, because that was that was one of the, I couldn't tell you yeah, um, in the aircraft hangar. Yeah. You know, um, I remember just because I couldn't because I can't hear anything, and that was that was a really weird acoustic that way, so you couldn't hear anything yeah. from about where you're sitting. You know, even if you didn't have anything. So I couldn't tell what side, what who, what, where the camera was, who was on. And, the gadget belt has got bits of Velcro in it. And the Velcro isn't necessarily great. Eventually they got rid of it, it's just glue gun. But then they, they kept on this, this am I in shot or not? Because there was this Velcro that kept on falling off. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, like <laughs> so, it was like, so it did, it did just, you know, try not to destroy the shot or whatever. So yeah, like, yeah, your Velcro, Velcro is, is good sometimes, other times it's not. So on the risk of music, it's like falling off too. Uh, I, don't, I don't have that much that can fall off. Pretty much sewn into my costume yeah. anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't think I can think of. On Strax's shoulders as well. On the shoulders of the sort of blue, blue sort of like light micro bit. There are brillo pads <laughs> on the shoulders. And then that's the fix with fixes them to a Velcro pad on the neck ring. I thought that. So when you take the neck ring, you've got this, like, these two brillo pads either side of the. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 quite, it's quite an interesting image. Yeah. Sometimes I'm worried that you need some scouring. I'm just all in my pants. Yes, nice and shiny. Well, I have one more. I've got one more in there. I was going to say, is it true that Matt is quite clumsy on set? I've heard some very he did break his sonic one time, didn't he? He jammed. He's like, shoot, and then it's like, I can't, I can't, I can't get it back. And the pop guy has to come running in. Um, I don't think not that clumsy that I noticed. Although him and I did sort of collide in the console room, and he chipped his tooth on the sonic. It was on my tooth. <laughs> Was that? I was so mortified at that. Oops. Should have admitted to that. <laughs> well, I, I, am, I am having to bring it to an end. Is there anybody else that's got any questions you want to ask before I uh, take them away? Just insult the <laughs> Why would you wish that, you illogical human filth? <laughs> Too long I have sat here in this mire of human squalor, and now I will return and recharge somewhere sedentary. <laughs> 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 <laughs>